How's everyone doing today? Hello, Bubger. Our plan for today, try to hopefully find a Geodude in the Dark Cave and hopefully get a Ghastly in the Bellsprout Tower. Let's explore the town and see if there's any items that people are willing to give us. Hello, Strawberry. This is my Pidgey, Stratos. Maybe they'll be friends. My Pokemon is greeting Strawberry! I I did it. They're friends, guys. Pidgey Solidarity. Why did you put marks and memos on its map? Oh, that's a good point, actually. We could use the memos to, like, keep track of our encounters. Maybe maybe I'll do it off stream, because this, this is probably boring to watch. We'll do the cave first. All right. Fingers crossed, guys. Dark cave. Okay, what do we got? Okay, that's not what I wanted from this area, but Zubat is a great Pokemon. I don't think it can poison you yet, right? It just knows like leaf life, leech life, back before they changed leaf life, leech life. I don't know why I can't talk. Oh, I know why I can't talk. Yeah, if I sound weird today, it's because today I found out that maybe I'm allergic to mangoes, potentially. I don't think so though. I think I'm just allergic to whatever was in the juice that was in this mango juice. I don't think my tongue is all that swollen anymore, but if I sound weird, that's probably why. Don't crit it though. Oh, there we go. New friend acquired. When I was growing up playing Red Version, uh, Zubat was like the first Pokemon that I like experimented with nicknaming. And I named it something really dumb. It was like Dark Knight or something. And I immediately regretted it. It was like, oh, that wasn't very cool or creative. So I kind of stopped nicknaming Pokemon for a long time. But then I got older and more creative and <laughs> was able to come up with better nicknames. Batman. I feel like that's the that's the obvious one. Maybe, maybe we do... Hmm... Because I just realized Dark Knight wasn't just the nickname of my red version Zubat, it was also the name of the Batman movie. So maybe it's just fated that I nicknamed this something Batman related. Bat Boy. That, it, actually, I like that. That works. Not yet a man. It's true. Bat Boy. It has alliteration. I like it. So no Geodude, which is unfortunate, but Zubat is still a, a great Pokemon. Crobat is one of my favorites that I actually used a lot. In fact, um, I got really far in like a friendly tournament by leading with a Charizard paired with a Crobat. Charizard would mostly just spam Earthquake, which wouldn't hit the Crobat because it can fly, and I just spread Toxic and stuff with the, with the Crobat. I made it all the way to the finals. I came in second place in that tournament. I was really proud of myself. So I remembered something earlier today. I'm, I'm kind of glad that at the last minute this game overtook uh, Fire Red in my poll of which game I should play because I'd forgotten Fire Red is a third gen game and in the third gen games they hadn't yet properly implemented the physical special split because in first gen special attack and special defense were just one stat called your special stat. It wasn't until third gen that they split it into uh, special attack and special defense but then back then moves weren't physical or special like independently. Physical and special was decided by type so like like all fire type moves were special moves at the time of fire red and all normal type moves were physical moves at the time of fire red that definitely would have tripped me up a lot bonjour are you a trainer here teacher i am good it is to study here french people don't talk like yoda so na maybe now he'll give us an item sure if it means i get an item I will listen to your very insulting accent. I've decided that instead of uh, acknowledging that this is a very poorly done fake French accent, that this guy just sounds like Yoda. Was he? Good teach you I will. In battle, Pokemon top on list. The walking one jump out first. Change order in list. Make battle easy maybe. Hmm? Oh, smart student you are. Nothing more do I teach. Good to Pokemon you must be. No. Okay. I didn't think that was true, yeah. Oh, now that the got- hey, I got the touchscreen capture working. So now, we can sign our trainer card. Art. Fingers crossed for a Ghastly. Actually, how are we to damage this Ghastly? The only not normal type attacking moves we have are Leech Life, which won't be very effective, I don't think, and Ember, which I'm afraid will kill it. We might have to train up Bat Boy here to catch this Ghastly. We don't have anything else that can hit it, so I think we're just gonna have to level up Bat Boy for a minute. God, this is- my brain is- has so much to clock right now. I- this, like, doing this is really gonna make me, like, feel for, um, like, the Let's Players I watch when they do stupid stuff, because it's like, yeah, it's a lot to keep track of mentally. I gotta talk the whole time. I gotta focus on the game. I gotta read my chat. This was the second Pokemon game that I ever played. I jumped all the way from the original red version all the way to this game, which just blew my mind. 
because like features that have been added like incrementally over the past like three gens, I had to learn them all at once. Like this game was very like formative for me in terms of like what I think of when I think of the Pokemon franchise. What should you get your dad for his birthday? Uh, Pokemon Soul Silver. Highly recommend. Minecraft Java Edition. Or actually, w what level does Pidgey learn Gust at? We could try to get Stratos ready to use Gust and maybe catch it that way. I think that's the move. So chat, if you were a gym leader, what type do you think you would specialize in? Swag type? Which, uh, can you name some swag type Pokemon, Penny? Or water? Oh yeah, because your, your favorite Pokemon is Oshawott, right? That makes sense. A very swag Oshawott. I could picture it. Oh, you were probably excited to see Oshawott in um, the Pokemon Legends Arceus trailer then, yeah? I really want to know more about that game. Because it, it could be really rad. My only concern is that Game Freak is the company making it. Or the studio making it, I should say. Yeah, I, I'm... When it comes to both the Diamond Pro remakes and the um, Legends Arceus games, I'm tentatively excited for both, but for both I would like to know more. I don't agree with all the people shitting on the Diamond Pearl remakes because of the art style. I think the art style is actually pretty clever because like, it just makes sense as a way for them to preserve the layout of those games, especially with how mountainous Sinnoh is. They'd have to completely change the way the game looked. And I think the chibi style is cute. I think the chibi style works for it. The only complaint with the art style I have is that the lighting needs to work because like the shadows and the shading is off. Awful. But I think that's something they can fix pretty easily. The only real concern I have with the Diamond Pearl remakes is they really stressed it's gonna be a faithful recreation. I feel like one of the draws to like remaking the Pokemon games is it gives them a chance to like modernize them a little bit, give them some of the new features, and like compared to Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, I feel like those were great remakes because like they added like the Delta episode, so we got a little bit new content. You know, we got Mega Evolution to like, you know, bring in a current gen mechanic and I'm afraid that we're not gonna get anything like that I would like to see like an equivalent of the Delta episode uh, or something like that was just like you know some more some like more content than the game originally had and then Arceus because Legends Arceus sounds like the Pokemon game that child me dreamed of like a truly like open world Pokemon with real time battles. That's the part I'm excited about is the real time battling. And I think it's cool that it's set in like ancient Sinnoh. But my one major concern is that unlike the Diamond Pearl remakes, it is being made by Game Freak. And I've decided that it's hilarious that Game Freak decided to completely outsource the Diamond Pearl remakes to another studio. Yeah, until Game Freak gets over their need to micromanage their very small team of devs, and like expands their dev team and gives them more than a year turnaround for a game, then I'll start to trust them farther than I can throw them. But until then, they're still modernizing the graphics though is the thing, right? Like the game looks great aside from the shaders, right? They're just upset that they modernized the graphics in a different way. If you look at this game I'm playing right now, because this game is the same gen as Diamond and Pearl, everything's chibi. Like, like it's a pixel sprite, yeah, but it's a chibi pixel sprite. My head is the size of the rest of my body. That's the other thing, just talking about expectations. Not even just the Pokemon fandom, just the internet doesn't understand how to keep, like, or how to set healthy expectations. Oh, here's a fun fact. Uh, I mentioned last time that I really wish they would bring back like the friendship crown mechanic um, which to my understanding is only in these games it's only in heart gold soul silver and it's this mechanic where based on your pokemon's nature whenever you talk to them there's a chance that they will find a cool leaf and where they're hidden, I think there's like eight of them that you need to finish the crown. What routes you can find them on will depend on what their nature is. And if you find all of them, you craft like a little friendship crown for them. And it's adorable. And my Crobat was the first Pokemon I ever finished a friendship crown with. That would be cool actually, if like someone else also did a Nuzlocke of this game, and then when we finished, we like recreated our teams in Pokemon Showdown, we could have a battle with our, um, with our Nuzlocke teams. That could be cool. I can- oh! I can't wait till we get ball capsule seals. That's another thing that I wish they would bring back. Stay hydrated, everybody. It's good for your health. All right, great news, everybody. I've got chicken tendies. Yes! All right, we're ready. We're ready to take on Ghastly. Some people in here battle you, don't they? Only those who reach the top will receive a wonderful move. Oh, we get a TM at the top, you say? Okay, 
Fingers crossed. Okay, dupes claws. We don't have to catch this. In fact, we cannot catch this. We instead can catch the next thing. This time for sure. Fingers crossed. We'll, we'll battle this guy. Do they get higher level as you go up the tower? Either way, we can just sweep these. I sway like the leaves in the wind. Good, because leaves are very flammable. Yes, more people in chat to keep their fingers crossed. Everyone cross your fingers and hope that our next encounter is a ghastly. Okay, okay, ghastly, manifesting it. Yes, here we go. Oh, please don't crit. Oh, oh thank goodness, we got this. Yes! Pogs in the chat for Ghastly! Normally I name my Ghastly, uh, m uh, Mr. Astley, like, like the Rickroll. Lark last time su suggested Sleepy. Sleepy is good. We, we might stick with Sleepy, because it's cute. Quick tempered. <laughs> that doesn't match the name at all, but okay. She gets mad if she that, you know what? Actually, that works. She gets cranky when she hasn't slept. You're so right. This, we looked this up last time. The blue one is raised and the red one is lowered. Right? Have I been reading these backwards? Can anyone else in chat confirm? Oh no, yeah, you're right. Oh no! So Bubger's attack has been raised and their speed is lowered. That's like the opposite of what we need. Oh no, Bubger, it's it's fine. Yeah, thank you for thank you for catching that. We've been having really bad luck with these natures. I mean it's a Nuzlocke, so whatever nat like we're stuck with whatever nature we get anyway. It just helps me make informed decisions on which moves to pick. I don't know if Typhlosion learns many good physical moves, though. They're, they're more of a flamethrower machine. Bubger's still my perfect girl, though. Do my best to mute myself while I'm eating so we don't get unwanted chicken tender ASMR. Do we do we want chicken tender ASMR? Is that what is that what people clicked on this video for? I'll do it. All right, all right. I'll eat a chicken tender, but just one, just one chicken tender worth of AS of, of asthma. Get the mic closer to my mouth. Stab it with a fork. All right, no more. Firecracker ASMR, oh my gosh. Ah! Oh no! Hold on, hold on, I need a moment, I dropped something. Oh no! All right, I'm back. Yeah, I had a, I had a dessert on the side, but I knocked it over. But I still got my chicken tendies, they're safe. I feel like we shouldn't mess around when it comes to the last guy. So I'm just gonna lead with Bat Boy, because I don't want to take a sw <gasps> Okay, never mind, that's Silver up there. I forgot that he's up there. We're gonna go back and heal up. You showed us what you've got. It is indeed good. Take this technical machine. However, you should care more about your Pokemon. Hey, Zeev. <laughs> he calls himself the Elder, but he was no match for me. Oh, he doesn't fight us. He just uses an, an escape rope. Ah, rip. Yeah, I, I remember the days of catching and breeding Pokemon for the specific nature. I mean, I still do that in my Oros game when I play, or in, in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Although I didn't do as much breeding in Pokemon Sun and Moon. I feel like they removed a lot of the quality of life changes for breeding in Sun and Moon, which is kind of a shame because Oros is like one of the easiest games to breed Pokemon in, in terms of like getting the stuff that you're looking for. Yeah, I didn't really do any breeding in black version, so I'm not entirely familiar with um, how many quality of life changes they had in that one. Because basically, as soon as I finished playing the story of black version, I was done playing it. It's like, bla black and white were okay. They definitely don't deserve all the hate that they get. But personally, when I finished black version, I didn't really feel very motivated to play more of it. Because like, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, I had 600 hours logged on this game last time I checked. And then Oros, I played a lot of. That's where I like really got into like making competitive teams and... Um, um, breeding strong Pokemon, making like, you know, stuff like that. And then Sun and Moon, I feel like I was getting into, like starting to get into playing it more seriously, but then I saw that um, a lot of the breeding features had been removed, and now I'm playing a Nuzlocke. Allow me to check the ties between you and your Pokemon. All right, here we go. Look at those eyebrows. Let's just go with Bubker. Spring out the big guns. Cook up some chicken tendies. Ooh. Oh. Okay, this just got more challenging. It's not like it's gonna get a Dream Eater, right? It's level 10. Okay, okay, yeah, we're good to stay in then. Ding for Bubger. Quick attack, heck yeah. Oh, so close to a ding, but Sleepy leveled up, so that's good. It's a technical machine called Flash, take it with you. Oh, are we gonna be wandering around in the dark? 
because I I'd rather not put Flash on Bur on Bubger. I don't know if Peach can learn Flash. Normal types tend to be able to learn a lot of moves. We might end up just wandering around in the dark depending on what our next few encounters are in the next few areas when it comes to dark caves and such. All right, we did it, guys. We conquered the Bellsprout Tower. We got a Ghastly. We also got Bat Boy. I, I, I just, I don't really intend to level to the level cap each time. Here's what we're gonna do. At seven o'clock, I'll see if I can figure out how to raid Mage's stream because it's about time I wrap up anyway. This was fun. I'm excited to take on Falconer next time. We just need to do a little more grinding before we're ready. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for helping. Let's let's go check out my friend Mage's stream. Sounds like she's doing a scary game tonight, right? All right, here we go.